it was here in these apartments where I first met John. Howard lived there in that apartment over there. Our friend named Rhiannon lived there. And this is where I met John, here in Oildale on McCourt. Here's a place full of memories. I used to live right there. This is the projects in Oildale. You see, me and John were best friends. You couldn't find John without finding me. You couldn't find me without John. We were just always together. So when I gave my life to the Lord, I had to go separate ways. I had to give up a lot of stuff, and John was kind of one of them. As Jesus became more in my life and Jesus became more real, I had to share it with John. I had to convince him that God is real because we both pretty much believe that there's no such thing as God. And if we did believe in God, it was kind of like some crazy, crazy stuff that we believed about him, you know? Remember, we were stoners, you know? But I remember I was able to talk John into going to one event with me as a Christian. I told him, let's go, they're gonna have a Billy Graham crusade. I don't think he really knew who it was, but I did. My best friend, John Garcia, passed away Christmas Eve, 2021. A lot of us have been praying for him for his recovery, believing God. And the prayer wasn't answered like I wish it would have been answered. And I don't understand how all that works. But I know the greatest miracle in John's life happened right here at this stadium. Because at this stadium is where we came to a Billy Graham crusade. And he heard the gospel. And he responded to the gospel. That night, John decided to go down all on his own accord and give his life to Jesus as Billy Graham gave that altar call. He did it on his own accord. I didn't have to push him at all. Matter of fact, I didn't even say nothing to him. He decided to go down there all by himself. That's why I know the decision was his. Years later, he was going through a really dark time in his life, he told me. And he seen a cross and he remembered the night that he gave his life to God. So that's why I know that it was real that night. But it was here that he heard a message. And the message is pretty much the one you're about to hear. And I know that he would want me to at least let you hear the message as well. There is no other way of salvation except through the cross of Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The only way to the Father, Father God, is through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now why Jesus? He's the only one that was born into this world without sin. But more than that, he was a righteous one. And when you come to him, you're clothed in his righteousness. God no longer sees your sin. He no longer sees your own heart. He sees Jesus. Now, I don't understand all about it. There are many things about the cross and about salvation that I do not understand. And I'm not told that I have to understand it all. I'm told that I'm to believe. And anybody can believe, a blind man can believe, a deaf man can believe, an old person can believe, a young person can believe. And that word believe means commit. I commit my life totally to Him. Jesus Christ from the cross says, I will save you. I will forgive you. I will change you. I'll make you a new person if you come to the cross by repentance and faith. Come to Christ. When you come to Christ, you come by the way of repentance. Repent means to change. To change your way of living and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and say, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. And I know that you're the only one that can change me. Hope went 
says in spite of our rebellion and rejection God loves you he loves you so much that he gave his son to die for your sins and when Christ died on that cross he became guilty of lying he became guilty of slander he became guilty of jealousy he became guilty of the most filthy dirty sins Christ took the hell that you and I deserve now God said receive him believe in him Put your trust and your confidence in him and I will forgive your sins and I will guarantee you eternity in heaven. It's all yours and it's all free. All you have to do is receive it. Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer sentence by sentence after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you've died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I repent of my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. He's alive. I've given my life not to a dead Christ, but to a living Christ. And he's given me a song to sing. He's given me a flag to follow. I have reason for existence. I know where I've come from. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going. Do you? Now the difference between me and John is that I continue to go to church. Not to make me right because I was already made right through Jesus just like John was made right through Jesus. That's not what we go to church for. We go to church because there we learn of the benefits of our decision that we make and what that brings. You see, John never really got to experience all the benefits here on earth that the decision that he made here brought to his life. And that's why I encourage you to get into a place, go to church, learn these benefits that you have. So not only will you see John one day, but that you will have a good life, a life full. The Bible says that Jesus gives us a life of more abundance. A joy that surpasses all understanding. But you have to learn these benefits for yourself. I say this, that John Garcia still is one of my best friends. And I'm looking forward, my friend, to spending a lot of time with you when we get to heaven. With bodies that are not corruptible, don't get hurt. Imagine the fun that we're going to have. Love you, John. Miss you.